Welcome back. We are in a yard in southern Spain, preparing Scua for our upcoming trip across the Atlantic Ocean to the Caribbean. In this episode, we finished the chain plates project by replacing the bobstay fitting and bedding the chain plates. One of the things we're doing as part of changing the rig on Scua is to replace this fitting which is the bobstay fitting or also known as the cut water fitting. This one is original and it's stainless and it's bolted through to the hull so the strength of this relies on the integrity of these two bolts which um, although it's lasted for 40 years ideally we'd replace it with something stronger um, something which isn't as subject to corrosion because the water line is about here and then obviously when we're underway or even when we're at anchor this is getting splashed with salt water a lot you can see little bits of corrosion and pitting if you look closely um, at least from this side you can and although I'm sure this would last a few years more I'd rather not take the risk and I'd rather install our new one so this is our new bobstay fitting this was made for us by Classic Marine in the UK I'm pretty happy with how it's made so they've cut a slot in this base bar and then put this through and then it's welded on the bottom and welded on the top and the idea behind this one is rather than relying on bolts holding it onto the front of the boat it's gonna we're gonna cut a slot and then pass it through from the inside and then glass it over to hold it up against the front of the boat and then obviously the force of the bobstay pulling on this hole will also hold it right up against there the glassing is mainly to retain the integrity of the seal to the inside of the stem. Now it's obviously a slightly different arrangement because there's no bolts involved and I'm not sure if any other Tayanas have this style of bobstay fitting or cutwater fitting but this is the same principle as is used on replacement west sail fittings which is where I got the idea from. They use uh, an angle stainless and then a tab uh, welded on the front and then passed through from the inside. So one of the complications with this boat is that around here from about this kind of level there's a resin floor poured into the bottom of the anchor locker. The anchor locker is all above here, this is all the void for the anchor locker and then there's a resin floor. So to even get to this I need to cut away part of that resin floor right at the front and that's another problem with this in that it's probably not been inspected for 40 years because that resin floor is still intact. So the new one's going to be more corrosion resistant, it's going to be more inspectable and it won't be relying on the strength of bolts. To cut away the poured resin floor in the bottom of the anchor locker, Ryan used a plunge saw on the oscillating multi-tool and chiseled out the cut pieces. So <clears throat> I'm more or less done scraping out, grinding out all the um, floor in the anchor locker. Look a bit grubby. And I'm just gonna take the bobstay off so that I can get to the stem underneath it and um, mark up, remeasure, and drill the holes for doing the whole the slot that the bobstay fitting is going to go through um, I'm not going to be able to dig out enough to get down to the existing bobstay fitting so that's either going to have to stay there or I'm just going to have to take it off from the outside maybe grind the bolt heads off but that's not such a worry for now um, some people leave it in and then use it for attaching a um, anchor snubber too but I think I'll just leave it for now just put the new one in in its new position which is just above the old one which should be fine um, yeah I'm gonna go do that now in the front I've been down Working from the inside of the hull, Ryan now marked and drilled a pilot hole 
for the top of the slot in the bow. In my own despair, but I'm all right now. Yeah. I can tell from the pilot hole that we drilled that it's in a pretty good position. I think it's probably better than what I thought it was. I basically want to get it as far down the stem as possible to give a good angle on the bobstay coming off. But so far so good. The next step is to drill the holes and make the slot. Straight through there, they're like perpendicular, yeah? yeah. Whereas this one doesn't really go perpendicular at all. Mm. It goes like that. Yeah. Eighty-five. So the drill is at that kind of an angle like that. Mm -hmm. Pretty thick. 40 minute pot knife and stuff. After coating the inside of the new slot with unthickened epoxy, Ryan used a thickened epoxy to bed the new fitting against the inside of the hull. This was not to bond the fitting in place, but to provide an interface between the fitting and the curved inside face of the hull. Now that the epoxy is set that the bobstay fitting is bedded onto, I'm going to seal around the front of it. Um, it seems pretty solidly on there, pretty hard. I hit it with a hammer to see if it was properly like rigid, and it is. So yeah, now I'm just going to seal to stop any water getting in. I'm just going to attach the new bobstay. So I've made a new one up for the correct length. And yeah, it's ready to go on. So as part of the re-rig, we're going to replace the wire inside the two um, furling units. This one's a Pro Furl and that one is a Furlex. This one is a lot easier because it's just like a normal wire which terminates in a normal terminal down the bottom here. And on that one, the terminal is kind of like built into the base of the furler. So I'm not 100% sure how to do that until I take it apart, but this one seems like the much more um, obvious way of doing it to me but to get it down <clears throat> I've just detached it at the bottom and then I'm gonna move it so it's kind of dangling over the side and try and kind of hold it there with ropes and then I'm gonna go up the mast 
detach the top and then try and lower it down maybe with the spinnaker halyard because it's quite heavy I'm not sure I could just like lower it down very um, uh, without any risk of dropping it kind of thing so that's what we're doing I've just detached it at the bottom which is pretty straightforward and we're going to get ready to go up the mast and lower it off Under the palm trees in the California sun Sand underneath our feet The morning's just begun I don't remember much from the night before Just from the human touch And now I want more To remove the wire from the furler Ryan cut the top fitting off. The first and easiest way to try to insert the new wire would be to connect the new wire to the old one and pull the old one through, which would guide the new wire through the furling unit and out of the bottom. And now my memory slowly coming back Cracks a smile upon my face Then it all turns black Something about tonight Now it's gonna be your last And now my mind is a mess My heart is pounding fast After dropping the inner force day roller furler yesterday I replaced the wire and it went okay but at every join in the foil you have to get the wire through a little hole um, I tried tape in the two wires together but it didn't really stick very well so in the end I managed to get it to about the second one up and then I had to undo them and then thread it through and then do them back up which is a little bit of a faff but I'm glad I did it because now I know a bit more about how the roller furler works and what spares I want to get for when we go to the Caribbean um, and yeah we're about to hoist it back up I'm going to try and hoist it rather than just hoisting it from the end of the for inner four stay wire which kind of bends the wire around I'm going to try it with a um, line just rolling hitched to the foil and just see how that goes Hoisting the furler up on the spinnaker halyard worked perfectly as I could adjust the height of the unit using a winch down on deck. All that was left would be to reassemble the bottom of the furling unit and tighten up the wire. After completing the inner forestay, we repeated the process for the headstay furler.
We're just bedding the external chain plates using some sealant to bed them against the hull and replace the 8mm bolts that we used originally with the 10mm ones that we ordered. Um, we ordered special, well not special, but A480 10mm bolts so they're super strong and should be corrosion resistant. So we're just going to take the chain plate off, clean it up, score the surface with sandpaper to provide a key and then sick flex all over it and then re-bolt it and sick flex the um, backing plate on the inside as well. While Ryan was working on the outside of the boat, I was working inside, bedding the backing plates against the hull. At first, we tightened the bolts just enough to squeeze up the sealant evenly. Then we came back when the sycophlets was cured to give them a final tightening. It was a long job, as on top of bedding the inside and outside of the six chain plates, we had to unload all of the stores that were in the way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos then please subscribe and click on the bell button to be notified when a new video is published. Please consider supporting our production on Patreon or by buying us a beer through PayPal. Join us next time as we haul Skua back in the water, tune our brand new rig and sail out of the Mediterranean.